welcome to PHP Storm. Uh, this is our last presentation of the day. You did it. Uh, if you were uh, still here from April's talk, which I think April, we might be, you and I might be the only ones, uh, you uh, missed out. Uh, it was a really great talk. Uh, it's really great that all of these talks, uh, most of these talks, are being recorded. So. You can go in and watch these uh, later. Welcome. That is not doing what I thought it was going to do. There we go. Hello, my name is Chris Weber. I am a principal software engineer for Nerdery. I am really into all of these things. Uh, and. Uh, I connected to my notes pretty much right now. Uh, yeah, I'm from the Twin Cities, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, where I checked this morning, it is 30 degrees there. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, and uh, this was us uh, earlier in the year. That's my daughter and the snow tunnel she made. Mm -hmm. That's how high the drifts were wow. at a certain point. She's gonna stand up soon. Yep, that's two shoulder height. <laughs> so uh, I suspect that is not a particular problem that you guys have had to deal with, but uh, this is a demonstration of how happy I am to be in front of you right now speaking yeah. to you about what is probably my favorite topic to be talking about. Yeah. That arc is very impressive carving and digging skills. <laughs> <laughs> that took many shovels. You can see the shovel right there. That's, that's not. It's not your regular kind of shovel. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a talk that I have given before. You can find them on the internet. I'll post these slides later and I'll save you the trouble. Here are all the links. Um, I went over a lot of the same material then, but in a different focus. Uh, um, I usually waste a lot of time going through slides and not a lot of doing, so I'm completely throwing the playbook out. I'm going to be spending most of my time tempting the demo demons and just getting into my IDE and be doing stuff in front of you. I want you, as participants here, I want you to be interactive with me. And if you have a question, just immediately ask it. We'll repeat it for the recording and we'll get it going, OK? So this is a different kind of presentation. Hopefully, you won't fall asleep. That's my goal. Um, let's stop eating the time and get started. Uh, where's my water? Maximum PHP Storm. Uh, I originally wrote this talk because um, confidence in your tool directly translates to confidence in your development, confidence as a developer. And the, your, your daily flow, things you include, things you choose not to include, are extremely important of like how you get into a good flow, how you uh, solve problems, and um, what this talk is uh, going to be about is, uh, you know, what are the things that can break you out of thinking that you are not going to hack it as a developer? How can you combat imposter syndrome? Well. Uh, I've, I've thought a lot about it over the last few years, and just something keeps coming back to me. When professional basketball players talk about why they are so confident, why Steph can shoot so many audacious threes, why LeBron stayed around to break the scoring record, and why Giannis is the most dominant basketball player in NBA history, it's because they put in the work. Have you ever seen Giannis when he first entered the league? He was a skinny twig. This guy. This guy could probably bench me if I was five times heavier than I am now. And he's like six foot 11. I'm a LeBron stand. All right, we're gonna talk about the things that IDEs do. And I'm gonna talk about PHP Storm because I love it to death, but I don't want you to translate this as an endorsement that you should stop everything you're doing and use PHP Storm. If you like the thing you use, I want you to like the things you use. This is all about what are the things an IDE can provide to you to make your life a little bit better. 
And if you're a text editor, sublime text kind of person, there are still analogous things that can help you. Let's take that. It's going to bug me. <laughs> All right, so this is how we're going to break things down. What are the things that can help you build? What are the things that can help you learn and read your code? What are the things that can help you uh, test your ideas and test the code itself? Um, and here's our first quick list. We're gonna go over all these things, and I'm showing this to you now, but I'm gonna hide it from you, but I've got it right here on my list to help me remember. That's basically why the slide's here. All right, let's get things straight first. This is probably way too small. Is it not? Yes. All right, I could have done this ahead of time. If you have a mouse, then you can set a setting uh, that will allow you to use the scroll wheel of your mouse to change the size of the text. There it is, now it's connected. So, what I did, and hopefully, well, it doesn't show this because it's not a full keystroke, but if you, on a Mac, if you press Command, probably Alt on a Windows machine, although I'll show you how to look all of these things up. If you hold command and use the scroll wheel, then you can uh, change the size of the text. And you notice that I didn't change the size of the text of the uh, panel on the side. I'm sorry about that. That's gonna, I can jump into presentation mode, but that's pretty janky uh, and very specific to uh, PHP Storm. This kind of uh, scroll to resize is available in VS Code as well. All right. So. Uh, We've got a number of bits of code here. And I shouldn't have opened the work one. That's what I didn't want to do. Uh, so first up, copy and paste. Here's a JSON export of uh, JSON API's meta tags that I was looking at before. And if I were to copy both of these things to the clipboard, then I could press Shift Command V. Wait a minute. There we go. Let's get this keyboard tracking working. Shift Command V. Then I get a list of everything that I copied to the clipboard. And I can uh, just know that it's there and I don't have to worry about getting the thing that I need to copy and paste onto the clipboard immediately. It's not a first in, first out kind of thing. I've got a little bit of luxury here, so I can uh, and copy those in. Um, one of the things that I love about VS uh, Code is its ability to put the cursor in multiple places at once. And you can do that by pressing the Option button. Can you take that full screen? Oh, well, certainly. Boop. No, no, look at the screen behind you. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Is that better? Cool. That was not good. <laughs> All right. Hopefully everything's still working. We'll find out. Uh, Multi-select. You can put your cursor in multiple places. And you do that by uh, pressing the option button. And then you can then see your uh, cursor in multiple places that way. I had a scratch. Uh, where I wanted to see that out. This one. So let's say you wanted to try to clean this page up. You can do a number of things. Um, one of the things you can do is you can search for the stuff you want gone and just like find and replace. Uh, any good IDE will allow you to find and replace. Uh, let's do something a little bit different this time. Uh, let's do a find, and the thing we're going to find is the garbage. This bit right here. I'll paste that in there. So here are all of my different selections there. Well, what if I don't literally like want to replace this? I want to put the cursor on every one of these things. So I believe it's Shift Option G. Nope. Shift option. Gee. Here we go. Maybe it's, yeah, there we go. Can I get it to delete? Nope. Mm. Gee. Okay, well, 
take your word for it. G it is possible. Trying to do multi curves? Multi select from a search. Well, let's just do the replace. You can replace it with nothing, and then it's gone. And then you can move the cursor to the top of the list. And then if you press uh, Shift and Option, you can just drag to select multiple lines like that. Or you can take a look at the carriage return, and you can find every instance of that, and you can replace them out, and you got a big fat line. So it understands regular expressions. It understands lined endings. Um, these, these are all uh, good techniques that you can use in order to flush out uh, a search. During uh, development, one of the things that you'll be working with a lot is Git. And you can absolutely jump into the command line with a terminal that's in your IDE. I don't know if you've had this experience, but uh, tools that have everything in one place, that's what I prefer. Uh, jumping out of the IDE into a terminal, totally fine if that's your jam, but anything that allows me to never leave uh, the one tool, uh, I'll always be looking for that. Um, question about terminal. Yes? If there's not a lot of control that you have with terminal, or if you didn't want to, where is it? So. Specifically in PHP Storm, if you want to look for a setting that's inside uh, the IDE, you can go open the uh, preferences on a Mac. That's Command, comma, and then you can search for it. And one of the, in the uh, PHP Storm, you can uh, modify what terminal. What this is using Mac default ZSH. So if you want to do something other than that, if you want to use Bash. You can install Bash yourself on the new Mac and get that. Is that what you're asking? Well, I've got this weird issue where I, it works fine locally, and I use it all the time locally. But if I log into one of our dev or state servers, mm -hmm. I get this. I get these weird character problems yeah. in the Linux. So it's like you mentioned thing. logging into a dev or yeah. test server. I imagine you did that via SSH. From yes. From but and once you log in via SSH, you're governed by the .bashrc, the, the resource file that loads that experience for you. And that's not something that's on your machine. That's something that's on the server, right? Yeah, but, so. I, if, but I have to, if I need to do something, I have to drop out the main terminal in that and then do the same thing, and then I don't have the weirdness. Interesting. And that's why, because I assumed it was basically a pass-through. Yeah, it's basically executing ZSH, and it's using your local computer's right. uh, resource files to load that experience, that the way you've customized that experience for a regular terminal, how it's trying to load it for you on, on, on PCs. It's a little bit different, but you know you don't want to use command prompt on, on a Windows machine, but there, there are things that you can do to use the the Ubuntu that you can install on modern Windows machines right. in order to, to live a happy command life. Uh, so uh, here in uh, the terminal, you can, of course, uh, oh, I guess this isn't a Git repository, so that's going to be a problem. Why isn't it a Git repository? Because I thought I checked it out here. Anything that's a Git repository. Not that one. So I've got multiple things up. This one's a Git repository. Am I right? It is. Okay. Here in the terminal, just to prove it to myself. Here we go. Git steps. Cool. So you can, of course, run all your Git commands if you prefer a command line driven uh, development flow. But there are two panels that will help you 
and that is the ability to uh, track all the changes you're you're making uh, in your uh, list of uh, commits, and then you can prepare your uh, git command here. There was a time when I was advising this for coworkers, and they said to me, I don't trust it. I don't understand what git command they're using, but I can guarantee you it's not the right one. Well, uh, if you were to execute a git command, it will, able, it will be able to show you the actual full command that it did in order to handle that commit and prove to yourself that it was right. Uh, so all of that is good. Uh, if we get uh, bold today, maybe we'll uh, contribute a couple of changes here in this, in this module live on the air. Uh, okay. Oh, so of course, while you're developing, you want to be able to make sure that the work you're about to commit is uh, only includes the bits of work that you want to commit, and therefore you'll want to do a diff on your code. So here I have. Um, done a diff, and yes, I will maximize this. Here you go. Uh, and you're able to see not just the uh, line that was modified, but here is the one space that I added uh, to the end of the line that's able to detect even something as minute as a single space. Um, and this may be a difficult thing to see. It's a difficult thing to see because it's so small, Chris. <laughs> There you go. That was half a shade lighter gray. There you go. Grays for the win. Of course, there are different themes. If if uh, the, the the colors that it chooses uh, are not appealing, are not revealing uh, to your eyes. Um, let me get to one of the things that um, I didn't know that I've always wanted before I started using uh, PHP Storm, and that is Scratchpad. Yes. If you uh, create a scratch pad, uh, you're able to I'll tell it what kind of thing you want, but maybe you don't freaking care. So uh, you just give it whatever you, whatever you want, and then you can copy and paste your code into this file. And it's, it's not a part of your project. There's a legitimate directory that exists, and you can find it uh, if you just right click it and go uh, to find in finder. <coughs> open in finder. There it is. So it's actually a part of PHP Storm. And as a result, it's not even in the same kind of folder structure your project is, in, it's in a somewhere else. And no matter what project you've got launched open, you've got access to that folder. So that means you can create <coughs> snippets that you want to reuse from project to project and it's always readily available to you. If you're living a sublime life and you're not wanting to use fancy indexing or all these other features that the IDE is, that's still a good idea. You can have like a folder on your hard drive where you keep all the code you want to reuse and just include it into your project whenever you're starting a new project or whenever you want it. You know, you don't have to do it all the time. I'm not telling you what to do. <laughs> But it, it's global to uh, yeah. Storm. So I mean, it's always a good idea to have those. You know, like if you learn something, you want to reuse something, you could always just memorize it. I don't know. I don't know who you are. Uh, you're not a savant. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you do it like a hundred times, and you know, like I I can remember Dresh CR, you know, even though I hate acronyms. Uh, so scratch files, super good. I've created a few. Uh, just for like drush commands that I want to remember. Um, like here's one where you are able to look for all the different modules that are enabled in your site. Uh, and um, one of the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this later because I've got a, a cool thing I wanted to show. Um, so I mentioned uh, diff tools. Uh, it's important to note that it doesn't have to be Git related in order to want to or need to find the difference between two files. You can select multiple files, usually two, and press Command D, and then you're able to see the, the difference of those two files. Here I was trying to prove to myself that the, the, the module I was writing modified the meta tags, and so uh, it in fact modified uh, 
the JSON API, uh, the, the, the meta tags, even in the context of delivering JSON API, was able to, to modify uh, the JSON API page. And so that kind of thing is super helpful to be able to quickly see. Okay, I'm in the mobile app next module. Good, that's where I want to be. Um, so as you're working, and as you're trying to verify that you're ready to go, that the work is ready to go, uh, it would be super great if you could just get like a stupid little code review without requiring somebody to stop their work and jump in and review your code. And that's what the problems panel does. Uh, good old command six. So uh, a good IDE like VS uh, Code and uh, PHP Storm has a lot of knowledge about your code and what is right and what is not. Um, and PHP Storm does a pretty good job of raising concerns. Uh, on line 183, it's telling me that uh, this submit form function is not doing anything. If I press command B, go to definition, then I'm able to go to where that function is defined and I can see, yes, it is in fact not returning anything. So what the heck am I doing returning anything here? Because it's just gonna return void again. What did you just do to go back to where you were? You jumped somewhere else? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I so, wanted, I if you know. press Command B, you go a place. Yep. But if you press Command uh, Option Arrow, you can. It's like a. It's like a back and forward button. If you go to the left, you go back, and then I can press it again, and point forward, and it'll. It'll. It should go to the right. If, oh, if I press the right things. Uh, boop, 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 there we go. Uh, what am I doing? Okay. Uh, so the keystroke, first, option. go to definition, command B, and then option, command, left arrow to go back. Option, command, right arrow to go forward. There you go. You can keep jumping to really far So the problems panel can be used as kind of like a really great tool for contributed developers to find anything that's deprecated. What do I need to do in order to clean up my code? It doesn't really know about Drupal's coding standards, but it does know a lot about PHP and certainly knows about annotations like deprecated. And so it can put a lot of red flags in your code. Areas for improvement to, to do later or now, if you want. Um, one of the things that they added this year that I love super much is, so you see this inherent doc over here? And I think it's telling me somewhere, maybe it's this one here. Yeah, this one right here. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. So if I click this, I can see, yeah, that does, it's just saying inherit doc. You may not know that's not, that's not the way it's supposed to behave. Like if I go here, if I go to uh, this function here, and this, this function delete this, it has inherit doc, but that's not a function that it's inheriting. That this is this is where it's originally defined. If I if it was inherited, I would see a little thing in the gutter, like like these right here. See this thing right here? It tells me, oh okay, well it's this is originally defined in the config base form trait, and then if I if I if I go back here I am again, um, and so having an inherit doc makes a lot of sense there. Uh, oh, it's small again. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, like a build form. We're, we're talking about a form here. So of course, build form is going to override uh, what? It's going to override config form basis default implementation, or or maybe there's there's a there's a, a interface involved. But these other functions here that were grayed out. Let me minimize this. Like add one. Ain't no add one in the config form base. It's, it's, why are you inheriting a documentation that doesn't exist? So the difference is if I go to a function that is inherited and I click this formatter in the gutter here, then I'm able to see like the original definition of what that is. And if, if it's like, if we're talking like complex things like plugins, there's a wealth of documentation throughout Drupal core of how like, what is this? How is it used? Entire paragraphs of text that are completely hidden away when you 
have an implementation that just says inherit dot. That is terrible. Uh, so, what's a good, here's a great example. I got two paragraphs that didn't originally have. One of the, the biggest problems that I, I, I've, ha I've had when I'm trying to review somebody's code and they do like a freaking event dispatcher or something like that, like I need to put that into the context of the original documentation. So, click on the, uh, the, the text in the gutter and, and hopefully you'll find good stuff. And if you don't see good stuff, that's your opportunity to write the good stuff. Um, just just so I, I do have them set up for it automatically includes PHP CS. Yes. Which can include all the Drupal results. Right. Or PHP style. Right. So I always squiggly all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that's another thing I, I didn't really talk about, and that's just like a base level expectation. If you're using it. In ID, you expect intelligence. You expect insight and further context about like how to use this. One of the cool things you can do with PHP Storm is you can put the cursor in a method uh, signature like this one. You can take a look at a variable and you can press Command P or Option P. No, Option P. That used to work. F10. All right. Going to go one level up. So I often forget keystrokes. And this is how I look them up. You can go into the preferences and you can look into uh, something within the ID called key map. And in the key map, you can search for uh, the name of a uh, keystroke, which I thought was related to parameters. Uh, but, anyways, every keystroke that you, you have is in here including ones you can create yourself. Um, I created a keystroke for closing, uh, for, for splitting uh, a window so that you've got left-hand side, right-hand side. Uh, and I created one for closing all unpinned uh, browsers. And so there's, there is that, you can always do that. Show content, you know. <coughs> But you can, you can see parameters. I have to remember what it is. Oh. Okay. Uh, some cool things they've added recently. Um, so I understand there's a there's a feature in VS Core called Live something, live edit, live, live share, live share, thank you. And it's great. Is it, is it great? I don't like it. You don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it allows you to edit a, a piece of code with another developer, right? It's, it allows you to do kind of like that peer, peer programming. Peer program. this is that. There you go. Uh, PHP Storm has something equivalent called uh, Code With Me. And uh, I can turn that on. And then throw that link into my tiny editor. Edit. Nope. Demo gods be damned. I, uh, I showed you go to definition earlier. Uh, there is a sibling to go to definition, and that is uh, the, the find usages. Probably should have used that method. Uh, let me go to this form here. And. So we are currently looking at config form base trait, and if I press uh, command F7, 
then I get a list of every place that, that function is used. And so, yes? It's good except for like magic getters. Like sometimes it always, always detect them. Does yeah. find usage it's always detect getters? Yeah. Um, like I haven't found too many scenarios method, where it doesn't do a good fun. job. Yeah. Right. Um, so this is a this is a module I've I've come in and, and helped out a few times, and uh, maybe a good place would be like the controller to take a look at. Like uh, here's a function get apple dev id. Where is it used? Uh, it's not really used anywhere. It's probably used, like I said, yeah. together. And probably defined right there in the router. And my ID is telling me that there are problems in this page. Come away. Uh, it's right here. I will not be distracted by that. Um, so this is the area where we can uh, start analyzing our code to learn more about it. When we are looking at the interrelationship of this method and other pieces of code, it's important to take a look at the structure panel. Uh, by default, you just see the, the top level things, but you can also tell it to show things that your controller inherits to see what are some of the things that you can now override. To see what is possible. And that same structure panel uh, works really well uh, no matter what kind of uh, piece of code that you're working on. If you, even if you're working with a markdown file, you can get a nice little document outline. Uh, to see where all your headers and stuff like that. Um, one thing that I kind of accidentally opened up is something more that you can use in order to learn about your code. Um, you can see for each line of code when was that code last touched. You can do a git blame. Um, and, and git blame has always been like super helpful, but it's also been very tedious because you have to do it via the command line. Having to see something like this uh, is good. It's like, ooh, here's my bit. I'm the source of the problem. <laughs> uh, I gotta fix that. I'll fix that tomorrow. Uh, so, so uh, git blame is good. Uh, I previously showed you git history. Git history is also good. I don't think I can make this bigger, I'm sorry. Um, but if you wanted to like take a look at each individual commit, you're able to see like what was the work that was recently added. Uh, and if you select multiple commits at a time, it automatically collects up all the changes that were made and, and gives you a good, true diff of what was the changes of that, of that selection. Um, and, and there's super cool things you could do, like if you're suspicious of a certain person bringing problems into your, into your project, you can, uh, you can, uh, there we go, take a look at all the work that they've done. I've got two commits in there. One year apart almost. And you're able to see, uh, you're able to, to have the evidence you need to appropriately instruct them of their problems. Uh, because knowing uh, where the problem is is, is uh, the, the first key part of, of solving it. Uh, there, there's a, in, in the command line, um, the, the, of course you've got your whole wealth of uh, Drush knowledge um, your your uh, command line tools that you have access to you, to you, uh, but with uh, modern ideas like this, 
you're able to have the command line be listening to your debugger. Um, and uh, here in my setup, the way that it's been set up for me, I didn't set it up this way, it uses Doxel and it's got a command to turn the debug on and you're able to have that debugger on for every command you run, including when you want to run Composer install, and it's a big problem. Uh, but if you were trying to debug a custom drush command that you're writing, or if you're trying to debug like how the cache rebuilding is working, you're able to execute the command in your terminal and see the debugger working within uh, your IDE, get to the appropriate context. Please go away. Uh, and so, of course, another way you can learn uh, is with the help of another developer, the code with me, uh, or the live something. Share program. Live share. Live share thing. I'll, I'll remember by the end of this. Uh, live share is super great because you can give somebody else uh, the control. Here in uh, PHP Storm, when you set permissions on a share, you're able to give them full access to your code or just give them specific edit permissions so that they can actually be editing code on your machine. And you can see them as you go. You can, you can once they log in, you're able to follow where their journey through your code. Every, every file they open, you can watch them open it, watch their cursor move around. It's, it's kind of scary, but it's not, it's not scary because they're, they're your colleague. They're, they're, they're doing it for a reason. They're, they're, they're there to help you out. Unless they're your boss. <laughs> and uh, another thing that, is, that has hit the scene recently uh, is uh, artificial intelligence that, that, that wants to be uh, helpful. Uh, where is the thing that I had opened before? Uh, the command here. Like if I've got uh, GitHub Copilot, enabled Copilot's also available for VS Code. And uh, I just wanted to write a little uh, bit of code here to help me explain it. It already thinks that, it, that this bit of text is, is what I want to write. This script will check all enabled modules in the current triple installation. That sounds good. I can just hit tab and it's there. That's not the test I did that I, that I prepped for. Because uh, I wanted to do a command where uh, I was just providing the helpful. It's like, oh, you can use filter to, and then to filter the output by a string. I just knew that. I knew enough about uh, drush commands, apparently, to know that that is what the filter tag does. That is exactly what the filter tag does. And I always forget that it's there. I always have, like, run the PML and I prep it and, you know, it's like, why? I can just do this instead. Okay. Um, hopefully while I've been going, you haven't been holding your questions, but we are soon to the point where I'm going to hand this over to you guys for questions, concerns, gotchas. John, I know you got a gotcha in here. Uh, and we'll, we'll go through those. But first I want to talk about testing. How do we use our IDs in order to test? And of course, uh, one of the first places that I start is via inspections. Uh, so IDEs can learn a lot about languages, your code, how it's used, what is right, what is wrong. And you can run all of the inspections that it has on your whole project or a specific bit of code. like. Uh, here, I don't really care if it's going to find anything wrong with the other files. I just care about the source files. So I'll just run inspect code on the source directory and get a like a health check of, of how I'm doing. So it didn't find just one problem. I probably introduced both of these problems. Uh, and it just doesn't like the fact that uh, I'm throwing uh, an exception of my own. But I thought that's what I was supposed to do. So I can, looking at here, I can have the ID suggest to me what it believes is the problem. And it just says, well, if you add this throws tag, then I'll be fine with that. But then I can get additional information here, and it can provide me a suggestion. Um, but honestly, I can't just do this on the fly. I have to really think about this. Uh, but yeah, getting a health check on, on your report, 
is, is a good uh, testing the skill, it's a good building skill, it's a good learning skill. It's evergreen. Um, and now comes the bread and butter of being able to use your debugger. Um, so one of the cool things about using debuggers in general is that that's the most direct way that you can uh, do in order to see what your code is doing at any given point. Um, but something that, uh, why is this completely empty? That does not make sense. Uh, something IDs are starting to do is they'll keep track of all the uh, bookmarks that you create. Uh, and it thinks that debug breakpoints are bookmarks. And so you created that breakpoint for a reason. It may be like months later and you totally forgot why you put that breakpoint there. But this would provide you a good landscape of like points of interest in your code that, that you thought were important. Um, it doesn't have to be a breakpoint. You can legitimately create a bookmark. You can uh, add uh, bookmarks and then they'll show up. So it doesn't actually have to say, warning, look out for this code. You can just say, hey, this is the part of the code that is doing the, the expensive work. And, and, and then uh, th this set of uh, bookmarks is um, project-wide. So um, being able to annotate uh, your uh, bookmarks. You can rename your bookmarks to, to name it something different, but by default it just uses the, the code that was on the line as the name of the bookmark. So um, while you're while you're working on this, you can leave yourself a little breadcrumb bread, bread crumb to, to find that out. All right. So when you're testing things, um, maybe you live a better life than me. Uh, you don't have to constantly like uh, work with uh, Docker and all of the problems that Docker provides, but uh, you're able to take a look at uh, services and see all the different Docker containers that are running. If you wanted to do something like restart your Docker, like I have to a lot, way too much, uh, then you can do that within the IDE. Or you could just go and use Docker Desktop or whatever you're using to restart Docker too, but it's kind of nice to have everything in one place. And see all the things that are being used and get like a, a true report of all the resources that you're using. Uh, let me look at my demo site where I set up a database connection. Where are you? Well, I did in fact set up a database connection. Oh, this is the HTTP demo. Uh, one of the things I love about this whole tool chain, uh, specifically uh, Peach Storm, is that there is a program called Toolbox that is, it, oh, I already had it open, uh, that uh, keeps track of all the different tools you have, all the different projects you start. So you can just uh, launch it that way. And why are you showing things? Do not embarrass me. Here we go. So it's a Drupal site. It's got a database. We never look at it. I know. But sometimes it's important to do a query to get the true facts of like, all right, it should probably work, but it's not working, even though it looks like it should be working. So why is the reason? It's the database. Uh, and Within uh, the, the console, oh my gosh, you're not going to, there we go, open the default query. Uh, you're able to run your queries on the, on the raw data and get like information about it. Um, for a project last year, I created my own cache, uh, and I wanted to make sure that only the things that my piece of work uh, created was stored in that cache, and it was super important to, to do that. But it's, it's just important to know that you can, you can look at all of the problem within your tool. And if, if you're not running something that has a database tool built in, then being able to look at the data somehow is super important. And the last thing I'm going to show you is the HTTP client 
for the last couple of years, I've been working pretty exclusively with web services. There we go. Here you go. Uh, and I asked Herschel to open the JSON API for the Florida Drupal camp. And so within the HTTP client, you can write your own. Uh, what's the one that people prefer to use? Postman? Postman. Yeah, Postman's good. Insomnia. Yeah. Postman can convert everything it's got into curl commands, which can be imported directly into here. That's what I like about it. Uh, I, like, I like staying within here. Uh, and so you're able to take a look at the data coming out of overall uh, uh, API response. You're able to do posts. You're able to delete every HTTP verb you can do within the HTTP client um, pretty much. If you've built code that is interacting with third-party data and it needs to execute some kind of request in order to get the data, you can test that request outside of your code, outside of what it's supposed to be doing, here, in order to make sure that their data contract is true. Because sometimes it's not. Uh, and uh, given that this is JSON API, I am able to execute a filter, and I'm going to cheat. Oh, good. Uh, what's great about Postman is that you can parameterize uh, bits of data. You don't actually have to put it in the request. You can use variables, basically. Uh, as you can start, you can do the same. Uh, you, you can uh, tell it the environment that you want to create, and then it'll create this little HTTP client.env.json file. And then you're able to create variables per environment. So if you've got like a dev and a test and a production environment, those can be different values as you go from environment to environment. And you can use those variables to get I talk. All right, we got to the end. I have one question about this. Did you say that you can do author authentication, like if you if the endpoint is um, right? Authentication? Yes. So uh, I've got some work stuff I can show you where I'm doing that. Oh, I think I can put that on tent on film. No, but yes. You're able to include whatever kind of HTTP header that you need to include. It's able to understand pretty much every every kind of, including all, all authorization, whether you're trying to get past an off field or if you're literally doing uh, uh, public key uh, encryption. Do you know of any quick shortcut that will just toggle xdebug on and off? I'm always like it's a tiny little telephone icon up in the toolbar. And yeah. I'm always having to like. <clears throat> and well, I, I would like a keystroke. The wool I pulled over your eyes, John, was that this is kind of like the new UI that they've been working on. It looks very VS Code-y, doesn't it? Uh, but they made the the little debug start listening telephone into a, a larger icon, and it's available at the top but it's also available on the bottom. But yes, there is. I tried, I tried that out uh, about a month or so ago, and I was like, eh. It did enough things I didn't like, and I, well, let's let it sell them. So in order to like run an existing debug information, there is the control D, control on a Mac, which is that, that weird carrot looking uh, thing. Uh, but I do believe there is, in fact, a uh, command where you can toggle that on. It certainly is available within the AID, and you can map your own uh, oh, God. map your own <laughs> keystroke to I it. Do my own. Yeah. yeah, so that's possible. Okay, thank you for all for getting through this far. But I'm going to turn it over to you. We've got how much time left? No time. No. Great. <laughs> Do it again. Perfect. <laughs> that was not my intention. <laughs> Double shift.